Why is it important to a neuro-oncologist to understand the endocannabinoid system and why? Well, for many years it was known that cannabinoids have some kind of effect on, on tumors. But uh, there were anecdotal reports. People used uh, cannabis and many of them said it works on the, can on the cancer that I have. But until quite recently, over the last 20 years only, or even less than that, over the last 10 years only, there have been a lot of uh, investigations. Most, some of them are in vitro, in the test tube, and quite a few now uh, with animals. And uh, there have been a very, very exciting results. Unfortunately, there are no clinical trials in cancer yet. I hope they will be very soon. So we are in a transitional state where the uh, very important animal studies uh, can be translated into human studies. And we have learned a lot from the animal studies. Uh, we have learned a lot about many cancers, but if we speak of uh, brain cancer or central nervous system cancers, we have a very exact data, quite a detailed data on what's going on. Uh, for example, uh, there, there is a lot of work uh, done on uh, neuroblastoma. We recently published that cannabidiol, a compound which is present in cannabis, which is not uh, psychoactive and which causes no side effects, it is not toxic, and this particular compound, cannabidiol, uh, in neuroblastoma, we found that uh, it uh, a causes cell death of the cancer cells. It's called apoptosis. We saw that it lowers the invasiveness of the cancer cells. Now, invasiveness is very important. That means that a cancer cell can move from one place to another. Now, most deaths from cancer come from metastasis, namely the cancer moves from one place to another and then it is impossible to take care of it. So cannabidiol blocks uh, metastatic effects. This has been known for other cancers and now it has been found that it's important with uh, brain cancers. Uh, glioblastoma, that's another uh, brain cancer and quite a few groups have been looking into glioblastoma and they see the same type of results. Uh, we uh, <coughs> anti-metastatic effects uh, uh, and angiogen anti-angiogenesis effect. Angiogenesis means the formation of blood, uh, uh, blood vessels. You see, the cancer cells need energy, so they need uh, the energy they have to send to, to have blood vessels. If they don't have blood vessels, they cannot develop like any other cell. So they send out messages to form blood cells. Cannabidiol has been found to block these messages. Extremely important. There is also something else which has been found by a group in the US. Uh, they found uh, that cannabidiol blocks the activity of a compound which is formed by the tumor. The compound is called ID1. And this compound is important in allowing the progression uh, of the cancer. It's uh, quite complicated, I will not go into details, but this is an important compound and cannabidiol has been shown to block the progression, the, the development of this uh, compound in the cancer cell. So here we have a lot of information whether this is also relevant to humans, we have to find out. But for the physician, things are developing very fast. Within the next few years, we shall know a lot about cancer and the brain, and uh, uh, we shall know, I hope, a lot of cannabinoids in cancer in the brain. So they have to know the background and they have to follow the literature because it will change. It will change very, very fast. For many years, popular wisdom told us that cannabis could kill brain cells. Today, 
we know some of these plant components can actually do the opposite. Could you talk a little bit about it? Well, for many years, the general impression, the general knowledge of cannabis was that it's a terrible compound, that it's toxic, that it causes a lot of damage. Well, we know today that things are different. It is certainly not toxic. It certainly does not kill brain cells. And most probably, in many cases, it helps with uh, mm, cancer, for example. It does kill or it does help kill cancer cells. It does not uh, kill the normal cells. So here we have a change in the view of the general population. And today we should know uh, that cannabis or cannabinoids of various types can be of help. But we have to know a lot of details which at the moment we do not. We do not have the exact knowledge of what's happening in the human brain with cannabis because there have been no clinical trials. But what we have learned from the animal trials shows that most probably, most probably, some cannabinoids under certain conditions can be very helpful and we should know how to use these compounds.